So this is the gas powered bottle boat. What do you need? Well, we're gonna use in this particular demonstration for you, this small plastic bottle. This is a 500 milliliter plastic bottle. You need the lid, but I'm gonna remove it right now. So you need to keep that lid where you can reach it easily. I will say straight away that once you've made everything, it's probably best to do the final bit in your bathroom. The best place to do this is in the bath, because you've got a nice long chain thing full of water. So get some water in the bath. You don't need very much, maybe about that much water in the bath, I mean more than enough, okay? So here's the ingredients. Plastic bottle, funnel that can fit in the bottle quite easily. Wide as possible. Okay, so why is possible that will fit in? Because we need things to flow in pretty quickly once we get this going. So don't use one of these little tiny funnels here, say, because it would take too long for things to move through. So I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, we also have some vinegar, which I've actually poured some out already, ready to use. That's roughly about 100 ml. We've got some baking powder here. We have some milkshake straws. I recommend very highly trying to find bendy milkshake straws for this. You'll see why in a minute. So bendy milkshake straws, very thin straws. That's something you might consider, but I recommend wide straws for this particular experiment. Now, your last couple of things here, you can see some pliers, a couple of nails, a lit candle, and some matches. Right, what's that for? Well, the first thing you need to do is make a hole in the bottom of the bottle, somewhere around the bottom. I've actually made mine here. We'll think about that later, why that is. You'll notice, I hope, that it's not a perfectly circular hole. It's slightly elliptical or oblong shape, okay? Now what we're gonna do is suggest to you one way of doing the hole, but of course, I'm sure you can think of some other ways of doing it. Some people, for example, will use a little drill, a power drill, and drill a hole and move the drill bit backwards and forwards to make that shape whole. I chose not to do that way. I've used something that I found a bit easier to use, but it is a bit more dangerous in some respects because we're using fire and heat. So please be careful if you do this way. It's just the way I prefer to do it myself. So I found a nail, a small nail here. And in fact, you see the other one's already got blackened on it. And basically what I did is I've got some pliers. Now you'll notice these are metal pliers. Now when you heat metal, heat travels through the metal. But because we're only heating a nail, these big pliers, the heat won't travel far enough in this particular experiment to burn or even heat my hands. It will come out through here, most of it. If you're a bit worried about that, maybe use a pair of pliers or grips with padded handles, maybe these big rubber handles you can get, or wear a pair of gloves, of course, that's another way. What I want you to do, if you're gonna use this particular method, and again, please be sensible with this one, just heat the nail in the candle. I'm just holding it like that, and as you can see, that's the way I done it. So I heat the end first, okay? Now I'm not actually gonna continue, so I'm just showing you because I've already done it on mine. Heat it for about, say, 30 seconds. And then when it's nice and hot, you can actually just push it into the plastic and it will melt the plastic, okay? Just push it in the point. Once you've got a little hole there, the best thing to do is take it out, reheat it. Already a little bit of the plastic's come off. You can see it's gone a bit black. Part of that's because of the soot, of course, that's coming up from the candle flame, soot. But part of that little black was when I probably touched the bottle. But you heat it again, and heat it a bit further in towards the middle. Okay, and again, heat it for about 30 seconds, get it nice and hot, and then put it back in the hole you've already made and move it around, move it backwards and forwards. And you'll only do it slowly, and that way you'll melt the hole in whatever shape you want. That's why I prefer to use this, because I can get the hole pretty much as I want. Now this isn't perfect, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna do what I want it to do. So that's just one way. And be careful, of course, even when you finish, that's still very hot, so put this somewhere safe where it's not gonna burn you or anything else. Now I'm gonna actually move this out of sight, just to get it away from us, because we don't need this anymore. Okay, I might as well blow out my candle, because I don't need that either. And we didn't even heat that one, so I'll move that out. And I'll get rid of the matches, which I used to light it. So now we have the hole. Of course, you'll need to test it as you're making it, because you've got to make sure it's the right size. And you want to get it right so that when you get whatever straw you're using, you push it in, and it goes right up to the back part of the bottle. You can see it here. So right up to the back. And in this case, I've got the bendy bit sticking out, which is what I wanted, the bendy corner. 
Okay. Now I need to make this a bit more airtight because it's not perfectly sealed. I want to make it airtight. Now the best way of doing that actually is in this particular method, I used a bit of blue tack. Now blue tack is quite soft, but you can make it slightly softer by rubbing it between your hands and warming it up. That's the way I'm going to do it in a second. But before I do, I just want to bring to your attention the fact that when I start rubbing and pushing blue tack around it, I've got a bit of a risk of squashing the straw. I don't want it to be squashed and blocked. I want air to be able to come through like that. So one way of doing that, and it doesn't have to be fully open for this experiment, but ram something up inside that will keep it open while you're packing the blue tack around it. Now you can see I'm using these sticks, these are co cocktail sticks, but you might find something else and that's fine. So I'm just going to push them up inside, they've come up to just inside there now, and they're going to help keep that straw open, okay, while I do this. So let's rest that there, Is it going to move down, got my blue tack, now if you stretch it a bit, That'll heat it up as well, but to be honest, probably one of the quickest ways of doing this is actually rub it between your hands. Okay, so rub it very thermally and push hard with your hands and that will heat it up. And when it's slightly warmer, it's a bit softer. That's the way I tend to do this. You might find another way, but that's the way I do it. Now, remember, we're just going to pack it around the straw, particularly right up to it. Now, some of it might come off again, but what we're trying to do is pack it. And of course, be careful of any sharp bits sticking out. You don't want to stab yourself with this one. So pack it around the straw. We're trying to make it quite airtight there. Okay, oops, let's get a bit more. You shouldn't need too much for this, to be honest with you. I mean, I started off with quite a small blob, as you saw. Okay, so pack it around nice and firmly. Remember, the straw shouldn't get too squashed. We've got the sticks inside. Okay. A bit around the back. A little bit more, I reckon. Excuse my sniffing. And some people prefer to use some little tool to help them push it in, like a little plastic piece of plastic or something. I normally find fingers are enough, but you use what you feel best for you. Okay, now. Again, we now need to pull these sticks out to make sure we get air through. I'll finish with those right now, so I'm gonna leave those there just for a minute. Let's just make sure it's not blocked. No problem. That's good, so I'm fairly happy with that one. So, we've made things so far. It's useful if you can maybe still bend this around, so make sure you leave a bit of the bendy piece, what we call the corrugated part of the tube, where you can see those little lines. Leave that sticking out, because then you can manoeuvre it around, change its direction. Okay. In fact, because I'm going to be using this in this bowl, I'm actually going to snip just a tiny bit off to make it shorter. When you do it in the bath, don't do that. Leave it fully on. I'm just going to snip. Oops. So I'll make it a bit shorter. Okay. Now. The next part we've got to do is get some baking powder and pour it in. Now, of course, here, I'm going to have to hold it in here. You can always rest it on something. As long as you don't squash that, you could rest it on the edge of a table, perhaps, to do this. But I'm going to hold it in the air. I want you to use the funnel and scoop out about a heap, a big heap of baking powder. Okay? Just put it in. And it should go through nicely. Make sure it's nice and powdered. Sometimes when you open the container, it's a bit lumpy and clumpy and it won't fit through the hole. So make sure it's nice and powdered. Now, of course, I'm only measuring this roughly. Probably I've already put quite a lot in there, haven't I? Let's put a bit more. One bit more. Let's see what happens. Okay. Now, mine went through no problem. If yours is a bit lumpy and you forgot to break it up and you get a bit of a lump caught, obviously having something like a skewer, we could just ram it inside to make sure it all goes into the bottle. Useful to think about. Okay, so there we are so far. Right, here's where things get a bit interesting because now what you need to do is pour some vinegar in, but this has to be pretty quick. So remember, you're now in your bathroom, next to the bath, water in the bath. You could have done all this somewhere else, like in the kitchen, 
and now we're going to do this in the bath. Now remember, I'm just using a bowl here just to show you what initially what happens with the bottle and what's going on inside. I want you to be doing this in the bathroom and lower it into your bath at one end of the bath if you're pointing that backwards, one end of the bath, okay? And I'll talk a bit about more about that in a minute. So, I've already put my vinegar in here. What I want you to do, you can still use your funnel again, put your funnel in, and what I want you to do is take your vinegar, pour the vinegar in, quick as you can, whip that out really fast, get the lid on, screw it up really, really tight, lower that into the bath with this going under the water. So lower it like that and see what happens. So, let's see what happens for my one. Okay, so here we go. Remember, this has to be done quickly. I'm actually gonna bend mine sideways a bit so it, when I put it in here, but let's see what happens, okay? So lid ready. I'm gonna be throwing things all over the place probably for this one. So in, in, in. So you saw lots of foam appear, bubbles coming out the back, and we can still see bubbles coming out now. So what's going on with this one then? Hopefully you noticed the similar things for yours as to what mine did. Pretty much it's all stopped doing whatever it was doing now, though maybe if I shake it a bit, it might start again. Oh, we've got a few more little bubbles coming out. Because look, there's some white powder still on the bottom. So, and now look, interesting stuff. So, give it a bit of a shake. There's still a bit of vinegar left, and look. So that gives you a bit more information about what's going on. Give it a bit of a shake. Oop. I'm glad I'm not pointing that at me. So, that's given us a bit more clue. If you needed it, I'm sure you saw everything you wanted to see anyway. Let's think about what's happening. When we put the baking powder in, not much happened then, of course, because it was just on its own, it was dry. We added the vinegar. Now, vinegar has got acid in it, and it's got acetic acid, actually. And as soon as we poured it into the baking powder, there, are, there is actually an acid component already in a powdered form, but of course once we put the liquid in, and more acid, it got very acidy, and then suddenly a chemical reaction started between the bicarbonate of soda that's actually in here, bicarbonate of soda, and the acid that was in there as well. And when that reaction starts, it starts making lots of gas, and it foams up as you can see, and you still see lots of foam still in here. And that gas is produced pretty quickly, now, if I hold this bottle, of course you can't see it very well now because it's all a bit dark and cloudy in, but of course the straw, the top of the straw, remember I'll put it up that way, the top of the straw is here in the way I'm holding it now. You can probably just still see that. Remember I came in at an angle when I first made this and there's the bottom of it. That's the bit I hope you managed to keep underwater. So the gas was being made and it's, of course it wanted to escape. The pressure was building up and up and up. Couldn't go anywhere because the lid was done on. So the only place it could go was down that tube and out through the end. Now, of course, some of the vinegary solution did actually come out as well. We saw it sputting out towards the end just a minute ago. But as it was coming out, it was coming out with force. It was pushing out with force. And you saw the bubbles in the water as well. Look, there, there's a couple still coming out, actually. So, you know, reaction's still going on. A few minutes later, it's still going on. And as the bubbles come out, they come out with some force. Not a lot of force, but they flow out with some force. And according to a law of motion, Newton's third law of motion, when you get a force operating in one direction, you get an opposite force going in the opposite direction, about the same size force. So whatever the force was coming out that way was pushing it forward that way. In your bath, I'm hoping the bottle did actually move forward a bit, okay? Did actually move forward a bit due to the force that was pushing it forward. That's obviously what we wanted to see happen. And I'm hoping that happened for you too. 
So this works because of a chemical reaction between the acid and the baking powder, making gas, the gas escapes out the end and pushes the boat forward. OK, what about things you could change? Well, we could, of course, change the amounts of things we were using. I didn't measure these precisely, so you could think, hang on a minute, how about if we measure more vinegar? Put more in or less? How about we put more powder or less? Remember, according to fair testing, when you change one thing, you should be keeping the other things the same. So whatever you decide to change, make sure you use the same amounts of the other things. OK, so change one or the other, see what happens. What about if we keep all that stuff the same, but change something here? For example, use a different size bottle. This is 500 mil. What about if a litre bottle we use? I wonder how that would work. Would it be any different, do you think? For the same materials, same quantities? What about the straw? Now, I mentioned to you, and I'm hoping you noticed this business, the fact that we can bend this. And of course, I probably noticed, you probably noticed that I had it pointing backwards out of the end. Well, of course, with a bendy straw, well, you could actually point this in any direction you want. So when you put this in the water, how about bending it sideways and putting it in the water and see what happens? When you do that, by the way, bend it in any other direction, I'll probably suggest just initially, if you're not quite sure what it's likely to do, put it towards the middle of the bath somewhere, just because you don't know what direction it may go in. If you're not sure, put it in the middle, and then you can see it and repeat it if you want. What about bending it downwards? into the water. That's another way of doing this. So rather than back or to the sides, what about down? So in other words, vary the direction it's pointing in. And I'm sure you can think of some other things too.